with a yo ho ho, it's Tale of the Toaster. Welcome back to Let's Play Inazuma 11 Go Chrono Stones Thunder Flash. This is the final chapter. We have made it to the final boss against Ragnar here in the grand final of Ragnarok itself. We will be taking on the strongest team that the Hyper Evolved children have to offer, and of course, it will be a very difficult match. But the fate of the world is on the line, and so we have to give it our very best shot. And we are fortunate at least to finally, after the entire game, have our coach back. Mark Evans will be leading us into the fight here. It's good that Axel gets to be involved as well, because, you know, <laughs> the hyper-evolved children and search for talent was part of Fifth Sector's real objectives. But what you need to do for this match is use all 11 of the story-required Ultimate 11 players, and you have to have them all on the pitch as well so there is no freedom here you have a set roster of players that you have to use but that is fine to me because that's what the whole game's been building up on and even if you could have any kind of team you wanted like in the previous game technically it's like pal packing made that so hard to do that it basically wasn't even a thing anyway so it might as well be a, a government mandated uh, required roster of players instead, if you will. So, sadly, Itor, you came the closest to being on the Ultimate Eleven, but Dino Boy over here has stolen your place. Bylong is meant to be a midfielder in the canon, especially when it's Soul Daystar in the anime, but, I mean, you know how much I love him. Of course I'm going to give him a forward roll. I've picked a different formation just to make that possible. Uh, Rusty, you're the final one I'm meant to kick off. Faye will be to fill in the place. Peter, I hope your formation's good. Certainly we've got a very good coach, because Thunderbolt is one of the best special tactics in the game anyway. And we get bonus Team TP as well. No downsides at all. What's going on? We're inside a wormhole. He sucked the whole stadium inside. Is there anything they can't do? We're within a wormhole? <laughs> What's his game? Testing, testing. Can you hear this, you crazy old fools? Simeon, you dirty cheater. We figured you'd try to blow up the whole stadium with missiles if you lost, and take us out all at once. So we moved it to a more... agreeable location. Shh. Alright, now let the battle to end all battles... begin! And here they are, the battle against Ragnar. They actually out-level us by two stages, 43 versus 45, but that's fine. I don't mind the final boss being a little bit more challenging because it is the hyper of all children after all, and this team is serious business. We're already familiar with Mare and Giris from Team Giel. They're still just as good as ever, in fact, higher level than before. And then you've got everyone else who's completely original. Obviously, we're very familiar with Simeon 8, but now you can see his moveset, and it's very strong indeed. Surprisingly, everyone here has some kind of animal pun 
in their name, like hamster being a particularly obvious one, and uh, swine as well, that's based on swine. That's not a dub exclusive thing, all of the Japanese names are animal puns as well, but it's certainly a lot less obvious in Saru versus Simeon Ape. How I wish he could have just been called Saru in the dub as well, because Simeon Ape, the moment I met the guy, I'm just like, why is his name like a monkey? And then it became, why is the rest of his team based on animals? But I can't like believe my eyes, ears, or any part of my body. This extra round is taking place smack in the middle of a spatial wormhole. What better venue for a truly out of this world match? Kick off! And I've got one more surprise for you. You'd never see this coming, but when I hit the start button, you go straight to the advance gauge and actually get to play. The, it has been the entire game where every single match going means you lose possession at the very beginning and you've got to get it back for story reasons. But the only exception is the final boss. This is the first match where they let you play first. And granted, you can't score. The goalkeeper is on full power, so all we can do is fill the advance gauge, but we're certainly going to try and do that. In fact, we're making no forward progress on that whatsoever right now, but an eye of the storm is going to be pretty tricky to beat. That's, um, that's fair enough. They can run down their TP just a little bit. This beta formation that I chose is not working out too great, so maybe if I were to Mixy Max a player... No, the Mare is going to get a critical to make things even worse. Ah! <laughs> he missed! What a loser! You're the worst hyper of old child and you're part of Ragnar as well, the proper final boss. Well, fine. Uh, clearly our underleveled players aren't quite managing on their own, so I could go for a Spirit or a Miximax, but let's make it a Miximax just to keep things within the realm. Because after all, if this were the anime, then at the very, very beginning of the match, all 11 of your players mixy max. That is not possible in the game, and I just passed the ball away from the player that I'd mixy max on purpose. That's a bit of a pointless thing to do, wasn't it? Now, cascading march. I mean, I could have used Thunderbolt, seeing as Coach Mark makes that more powerful. I just felt like I didn't want to waste it in a situation where you can't score. Well, fine. Gabby is going to be mixy maxed and got his fighting spirit out as well because Mr. Swine over here, if that is his name, has a very good fighting spirit for dribbling. He's got backslash on Kmet and that is not something we want to be having to deal with. Valkyrie Signal, I just noticed, has a, a lower FSP than Saw's fighting spirit move. Oh dear, I guess... Jag Warrior is better than Valkyrie. That's very sad to think about. But yeah, only with Miximax and the Spirit out could we be stopping Backslash. That would have been a formidable force to come up against. Probably need to armor fly soon, eh? Wow, that used up a whole ton of our FSP. Oh dear. Well, anyway, it's doing a good job at least of running down the advance gauge because that's all we need to do. We can't score but they can score and it is genuinely quite difficult to stop them if you don't use at least a Mixy Max or a Spirit. But for now, let's use Southern Cross to hopefully complete that gauge and then that basically concludes Gabby's contributions to the match.
Um, guess number one, he's gone Super Saiyan? I can't say I expected this. He just goes for a regular shot, but yeah, you've got no chance of stopping it. And Simeon is going to get the first goal of the match. How can they move so fast? Did they power up? They used ampoles. Ampoles? What are they? It's how they modify their powers. They store their aura in ampoles to enhance their abilities in different ways. And these ones made them lightning fast. This could be a problem. Uh-oh. It certainly will be, and for that reason, we need to get a goal in this half without letting them get one either. And we only have, by the way, 15 minutes to do so. So Bailong is going to be mix and matching straight away because he is going into a command duel with Simeon, and that is going to take some getting past. Go for warp step. It is a void type mega move, so it is just about good enough. I know that, at least in the cutscene, Saru does have Eye of the Storm, so he was probably capable of challenging for it if he wished. And again, the enhanced speed of these players means that I'm getting into more command duels before I can even bring out Bylong's spirit, so I need to do that right now, and I've missed my chance. I was even going to go for his exclusive Mixy Max with Chuga Liang, but once again... It has failed. Oh dear, Bailong, you're actually going to be the reason we lose this now. Come on. I only did two interactions with him, and here comes Eye of the Storm now. So that is a dribbling move, my mistake, not a blocking one. And it's, um, it's, it's nice. Like, it feels like a move that could have been in the series since the very first game. But it's certainly a powerful thing that you wouldn't want to come up against in a hurry. And Arian, unfortunately, that... Uh, animation where, sorry, Gabby where he lost his spirit, that stopped me from clicking on Roma's spirit button, and I'm really, really struggling here to even get the ball, and we need it, because if we don't score in this half, we get a game over and lose, and instead, we are forced to stop them from scoring, and JP doesn't have his Mixy Max or his spirit out, all I can do is go for Mugen the Hand and pray. Well, oh dear. I've got a few minutes to try and get two goals now in the first half. I think this one is starting to look like a write-off, but at the very least... We will use Thunderbolt. I nearly engaged with that spirit summoner again. Oh no, we can't use Thunderbolt because we're in the wrong section of the pitch. Well, Virtuoso Volcano will have to do. First time I've actually used it on command. Bylong's out of stamina. I would bring out his spirit, but he's again got into a duel before we can do anything. Well, Bylong's utterly ruined this. Zanark, bring your spirit out, please. Zodiac. And also the goalkeeper is finally now bringing out his fighting spirit. Normally, you kind of go near the goal in the first half of the match and then you bring it out so that it can be gradually running down if he chooses to armor fly it, but no, only now is he bringing it out, and that's why I need to go for Xanark Ultra, Mixy Max with Hurricane Zeta, to even stand a chance of getting one goal, never mind two. It's always good to have a nice, fun, challenging final boss, but Crimson Prison. It's not I Am The Almighty, but it got a critical, which means for the first time, achievement unlocked, we got a four-figure shot power. It's now back in the three figures when going for the shot, but getting past Inferno Fist is pretty notable. Now then, how much time have I got on the clock? Four minutes. Bylong out of the way. This is all coming down to Xanark here. Oh no, oh dear. Where is he now? Get him as close as he can. 
He's going to have to armor fly straight away before his gauge runs out and just run like the wind. Oh, he doesn't even have a special move for this. I think I should have gone with block. I've actually made a bit of a mistake here. At least he's not going for a backslash. Genuinely, the fate of the match rests on this command duel, I think. He's going for a charge as well. Good, he doesn't have a dribbling move. He's going to try. We've taken the ball and KO'd Komet. That is a game changer. Please, can I stay in the match here? I'm running out of time. But I do have bungee ball burst that I can use in every interaction. Particle Accelerator is one of the best blocking moves in the game and it's Void type, so it certainly is a challenging threat in every duel that I get in. But if I can get past this one, I can go for goal. It won't necessarily score, but I am still mixing Max with Xanark Ultra, so I can try and I am the Almighty. Please, 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 please. This is the final minute. Ah, oh, I'm so nervous. I just wish he was saying SUPER while he was doing it. 574 against Inferno Fist. Oh, we've done it. <laughs> we make it to the second half at all. And it's entirely thanks to Xanarx, just because he is a hyper-evolved child, so is Faye. That's even something that happens in the anime. They're getting so overpowered and then they just have to kind of realize, wait, we've got two hyper-evolved children on our team. Let's rely on them as well. And, uh, well, yeah. Oh, how can they be on equal footing with us? We're hyper-evolved children. We're the strongest team in the world because of the gift we all share. <laughs> Special powers don't make a team strong. It's the thoughts and feelings of every player working together that's important. Liar! Our powers give us worth. We're a billion times more important than those old men. And it's our powers that bring us together as new gen. I finally understand now. Simeon, listen to me. New gen doesn't exist because everyone has superpowers. It's because we're all sad, lonely children. We were all outcasts, and New Gen was our refuge. That's the only thing that's keeping it together. No! You're a liar, Faye. We are the next evolutionary step. New Gen will herald a new era. The strong can survive without relying on grown-ups. On anyone. That's why we are strong. What's the point of living on strength alone without anyone to help you? That sounds awful. I'm sorry. I don't know how to explain it, but that's not what makes a team. You have to be burning with passion and overflowing with tears and, and dancing with happiness and, and all these things together. Together? Together. That's what makes a real team. You have to make friends. And if you do, make an unbreakable bond that'll last forever. He's right. We may have traveled through time and space to become the ultimate Eleven, but the most important part was the journey itself, and what we gained from it. The bond of friendship. Uh... I was alone like you, but after traveling with Arion and his friends, I don't feel alone anymore. They're like a family to me now. We're not alone. We're special, connected by our power. We don't have to be friends to be new gen. It shouldn't matter whether you have powers or not. We should treat each other as equals. No, we're special, we're gifted. Well, dudes and dudettes, this is it. The second half of Ragnarok's real final match. The first half was like outrageously intense and neither team gave an inch. Who'll ride this wave and who'll wipe out? Let's find out. And I am forced to make an unfortunate decision that I would never want to have to do in the final match. But I must change my formation so that Bylong is completely out of the way because sadly He's a bit rubbish. He's completely run out of stamina through two Chugaliang interactions. 
He's my favourite player on the team and I've utterly ruined his chances of getting involved with any sort of glory, but I guess Sol Daystar really is the cannon player for the team. Simeon, should we knock them out with kinetic waves? No, let's not. It'll be the same as admitting defeat. There's no way we're weaker than them anyway. Hmm... We're using the rest of our power now. All of it. Your wish is our command. And they have gone full power yet again. You cannot stand in the way of Simeon Ape. Don't even bother bringing out a fighting spirit yet because it would only be getting beaten. Evera is the biggest fighting spirit in the game. And now it's going to be flattening JP. Uh, sorry about this, you've had to let a lot of goals in so far. Goal! See what new gen can do! And, uh, we get a replay of that, no thanks. So straight back into free play again. Simeon's fighting spirit is incredible. Ha! Huh, there's more. Do you feel the horror? The despair? Let me show you my other face. Uah! What? Is that his mix and match form? Normal humans wouldn't understand. This is the true power of a new race of beings. Um, what on earth is that? Seriously? <laughs> the fighting spirit was so cool and now, um, well... We know why he's called Simeon Ape now. He really does turn into a monkey after mix and matching with the S gene, which is just named after himself anyway. It's not really much much of a mix and match if he's merging with his own genes, but uh, yeah, he can turn into a monkey for some reason. I'm not sure I'm envious of that one, Simeon. Uh, sure, whatever you want. I'm only just getting started! Lord of Demons Ivera! Armorfy! Now he's armorfied as well. Just how strong can he be? Surprised? That's not even the full extent of my power! Move out! It's time to show the world just how special we are! And he must go for goal again. This match is truly looking dire. Triple Threat is a move exclusive to his mix and match with the S gene and is actually like Ri uh, Victor, Ricardo and Arian's move from the first Go movie, but it's here again. I don't know if I can last much longer. What's the matter, guys? Have you forgotten? Remember how you always play. The rhyme on way. The Ryman way! Ha! I've told you the most important thing in football often enough! The most important thing? Uh... What was that again? If you work together as one and go up against your opponent with everything you've got, then you're sure to win. Even if you're the strongest in your own right, it doesn't mean zip if you can't work together! I think we've all witnessed that. What really counts in a team is harmony. When all players work in unison, you can achieve perfection. That's right. We're a team. Even if every player on their team is stronger than us, together we're stronger than they'll ever be. We're the ultimate 11. 
And that means that when Mixon matched, Arian can now use Ultimate 11 Assault, a very strong shooting move. But the fact that he has to be Mixon matched is a bit of an obstacle. We also get the special tactic, Grand Plan. Yeah, I was kidding, he makes a match straight away, so I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's a move that in normal play you would only be able to do when mix and match, but here we can use moves at no cost through the power of the ultimate 11. But only with Arian, of course, so armifying him is generally a good strategy as well. After all, we do have a total of three goals to overcome just to tie the match. I will go straight for the armor fire because we have stuff like Sword of the King that we've not really shown off in the entire Let's Play so far. He's even skipping a command duel there, but Saru, Simeon Ape, is gonna take quite a bit more beating. But we can do it, even when he's got everything on power. From armification to monkey man stuff, Arian can get past and he's using his moves at no consequence. And again, well, we're, we've got the fighting spirit out so it would be at no consequence here anyway. But yeah, he can use Sword of the King as much as he likes, even without the fighting spirit up. I'm just doing it for that little bit of extra flair. Let's go for a tornado tunnel. Oh, I nearly picked the wrong time for that. This is the first time they've actually tried to stop us in our tracks. Look at that, that's our second move that's in the treble figures. And this time it really does make the difference. Here comes the ultimate 11 assault. Hmm, what's going on? I can feel it, our thoughts becoming one. Not just the 11 of us, but everyone we've met and fought together with through the ages. Their hopes and dreams are here with us. And that becomes our power here on the pitch. Ho! Oh, your auras are perfectly synchronized. This could just be it. We're going to win this for the future, for everyone. Give up? Or do you? The old world needs to be cleansed. You can't stop us. Well, I think with a move like that, you'll find that we might just be able to, as long as we can get another two goals and bring things back to normal. So, first thing I must remind you of is that we shouldn't forget about our new special tactic, Grand Plan. I'm gonna go for another run towards the goal with Arian first, just for the sake of of leveling, bringing us closer to leveling the scores again, because I am forced to admit that while Grand Plans can allow your players to unleash some very strong moves, it's actually very difficult to use because it involves gasp gameplay. <laughs> so after I go for one more goal with Arian, hopefully we're going to give that a go. Or they're gonna call us a foul. Um, excuse me? This is not the time. Have you seen the fouls that the Hyper Evolved children were doing in the past three matches? They've been doing all kinds of things, but we... Oh, we're all alright. We did slash through him with a sword. I'll admit that one, but... Now I'm not sure Zanna has actually got enough TP to go for a shot here. He's got 51, but all of his moves are so powerful and the opponent is armified. Well, this is a disaster. Am I going to lose because of a foul? Oh, no, oh, no. 
Like I needed that cheeky goal in a couple of seconds so that I could focus on the rest. I'm going to bring out some other random fighting spirit. I haven't decided who it's going to be yet. Let's make it Victor. But Aaron's going to hop back into the fray for now. He's just in position. But that has genuinely cost us some time here. We've got 11 minutes and... No, we can't just settle for a tie here. We need to win. Sword of the King and hope it's not a foul again. The fighting spirit is about to dissipate. And we kind of need it active to get the goal here. Oh dear. Is Ultimate Eleven Assault going to be enough purely on the basis of Miximax strength? Well, let's try it. it. I do like, by the way, that it's like the promo art for the game. We saw that rainbow background in like the, the pre-release for the game. It was like a chapter one thingy we thought, but now it finally comes back as our final shot. So that makes the current score five to four. And again, um, Saru does get the, I keep calling him that. He, Simeon does get three goals guaranteed, but we really hurt ourselves by dropping an extra goal in the first half. How can you still fight? How, 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 how? Uh... I thought he was going to transform again, but no monkey man for now. Let's get the ball first of all, and then we're going to try it. I said let's get the ball, and then... We're going to try it. Hyper Swiper with no TP loss. And they had to give us something to make us capable of getting three goals in a row. Hit that special tactics button and you can unleash Grand Plan. It's the most expensive special tactics in the game. And it's also kind of one of the least effective because it's so hard to work with. Thunderbolt, you just press a button and you can go for goal. Grand Plan is very different to that. I get it now. If we all link our passes together, it draws out our power and leads us to victory. This is what football's all about. This is why it's fun. We were so determined to win, we forgot what it's supposed to look like. That's the way, Arian. You just have to take it at your own pace and play football the way you want to. Then fortune's sure to smile upon you. I feel like we can take on the world right now. Come on everyone, let's link our passes and drive the ball home. And he's not kidding. Grand Plan is a special tactic where after every pass of the ball, the power of your actions becomes stronger. But you cannot pass it to the same player multiple times. It doesn't stack the power in that way. And if you lose possession, then it's all gone. So, and we have done that right away. We got two little passes, and then we just gave it away to Giris, who's even bringing out a fighting spirit, just to make it even harder for us to even get near the goal. Never mind score with Grand Plan. And sure, you can use Grand Plan to get some absolutely absurd power stats going. It's definitely good when used correctly, but it's kind of more fun to just pick on easy competition route matches who don't really stand in the way than it is, like, a final boss who could take the ball from you at any time and completely ruin your grand plan. But I will try it again. Pass to... Well. I knew that losing possession of the ball caused you to lose the power that you'd built up from grand plan. I didn't realise it cancelled the special tactic altogether. But... Oh dear, oh dear. Looks like I'm going to have to try and use Grand Plan in some random competition route match to show it off instead. Because, well, we failed. We got two passes and that was it. The Grand Plan is over. I cannot mix and match with Big because we've already got too many people mix and match right now. And who can I take it away from, apparently? Nothing. You cannot cancel a mix and match within that menu. Certainly I wouldn't be cancelling Aryans, but we're forced to go for splitting hairs without the power of Big. That is a shame, but is it going to be enough? 380, I'm not too confident. Mm. 
It isn't. We've still got time, but things are getting tough. Armor 5 Victor, and let's try and go for another goal. And Seal Matrix, one of the only optional moves I've given to any player in the game, but it's certainly doing us a solid right now. Let's get past this defender and try to make things 5-5 against Ragnar, which I must admit, I really don't like the team name. This is the worst time to bring it up, but they're called the Lagoon in Japanese, and that's way better than just... Ragnarok with half the word missing. I mean, yeah, Lagoon is a pun as well in Japan because L and R are interchangeable in Japanese, so the team name is kind of, uh, the tournament name is kind of Ragnarok, or the team is uh, Ragoon, whichever you prefer. But anyway, um, well, I completely ruined my monologue, but we've got 5-5 five five now. What? How is this even possible? The likes of you can't beat us. You can't win. No, I'm at my limit. All of my powers are spent! If I lose my powers, this team's over! It's my power that kept New Gen together in the first place! It can't end here! Not like this! I won't accept it! We will win! And back to free play, what's he got up his sleeve now? Absolutely nothing apparently, we're just carrying on as normal. A draw is not good enough, I must remind you, we do need to win. One more goal must come out. But another conversation topic I want to briefly drop in while we've got time is the fact that Simeon so strongly resembles Aryan. Like, they look very different based on their hair and clothes and general appearance and whatnot, but they've got the same face structure. And it's an open-ended thing that's never actually explained in the game, but Surely the only logical explanation is that he's a descendant of Aryan, because after all, the hyper-evolved children were born of people in this era getting so good at football that they surpassed their abilities and evolved, and Aryan is certainly someone who would do that. And yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Simeon was a distant descendant of him. You do have to wonder who he like married and had kids with, but that's certainly not something that will ever be explained in any Inazuma 11 piece of media. Take 
together as a team. Yes, that's it, Simeon, and the match is not over yet. We are now winning, and they're certainly not going to get any guaranteed goals or anything like that, but they are still the same extremely strong team that we've been facing against this whole time. You are still in danger of losing to this newly motivated Ragnar team, especially when the spirits start dropping like flies. Victor's isn't going to last too much longer either. I'm surprised Victor's got as, gotten as involved as he is, because I usually sideline him for Bylon, but <laughs> I had to change on that one. Do we have enough TP for another grand plan? I doubt it. Um, which spirit are we randomly going to bring out? JP would help secure the victory, but that feels kind of cheap. Like, we've got to have some level of suspense, right? Let's just bring out Jaguarrior, and if we lose, we lose, right? I mean, I say that now, I'd be absolutely devastated if we lost, but uh, it's so good that we get the final 10 minutes of play against, uh, you know, Ragnar, who finally realised the whole friendship thing and that they were a team this entire time. And yeah, we can't forgive them for all that they've done in the future. Like, they've destroyed buildings, they may have caused casualties, maybe even deaths. They unleashed war upon people, like... They certainly all need to go to jail, but let's at least use this last time to have some fun playing football with them. And they're certainly trying their best with every Black Briars in the book. Goldie's finally getting in. Why is everyone piled together? Where's the rest of the pitch? What's everyone else doing? <laughs> Hell, Black Briars absolutely can't deal with this. This one member of Ragnar getting the random bit of spotlight, but... Yep, here is Simeon in possession of the ball. He's going to Mixy Max again? Can he do that? Um, well, I can't bring out any more. This is our last bit of suspense that we were looking for. He's turned into a monkey again. I really <laughs> don't see the need, but Gabby is still mixing matched after all this time. The Flam is going to beat out Decoy Deploy. I don't know how. Mix and match Joan has managed to last the entire match, but it's a good job it did because I have no idea where Saw is right now. Are we going to finally win this match? What a great final boss this is. There's still five minutes to go. Zanuck cannot go for any shooting moves. It's nice getting it. Well, he could have gone for a fire drill. Not fire drill, that's his defensive move. He could have gone for bungee ball burst, but it probably would have lost to Particle Accelerator. Hey, you can't blow me up with bombs now that you've been... You know, you've come to your senses and stopped being bad guys and all of that. Who do we want to go for shot? Well, you know what? Saw is a player who always gets completely sidelined by every player and he's so unpopular that he's taken off the team pretty much as soon as you hit the post game with everybody. Why don't we armify and go for a shot with Saw? genuinely score, you know, because the goalkeeper's fighting spirit is gone. 273. Ah, negative feedback. Mm -hmm. Oh, he scored a goal with Saw and got to 7. 7-5. <laughs> the canonical scoreline in the anime, by the way, is 5-4 to four in favour of Chrono Storm. That sounds ridiculous enough, but now here we're in 7 5. Well, go on, go for a shot. Make it 7 6. I'm not bothered anymore. Show us a bit more of a, a shell burst from Simeon or any other special move that's exclusive. I love the shots that Mare and Giris have. Of course, we've seen them all. I think it's that formation beta just chucking us into a, yeah, just situation after situation. Finally, we go away with Xanark Ultra. I wish you were still called Xanark Super... Sorry, Super Xanark with Great Max Nori. Super! But let's bring out Nobunaga Oda instead just to get as much representation of the Ultimate Eleven as we can for this final step because it is a shame that we can't just have them all mixed and matched in this match like we do in the anime, but that would be completely broken and we would have a difficult time losing. So, hey Presto versus Particle Accelerator, I think it is now safe to say we have beaten 
Ragnar, the Hyper Evolved Children, New Gen, and one Ragnarok. Do we get one last shot before we go? To truly flatten Simeon Ape and his motives forever threatening to bring harm to mankind? Sure, let's make it 8-5 and, well, it's not gonna go in, but let's make them truly regret ever trying to make this game exist, right? Negative feedback will be enough. I do like that move a lot, but that's the last bit of glory they get. We've beaten the game. Fantastic. Evans, we did it! We saved football! Yeah, well done! Well, are you gonna say something? We're all waiting for you! So we have one last word with everybody. We did it, Arian! We saved football! I knew you'd be an amazing captain, even better than I was! It's amazing, we really managed to save football, huh? It makes me kinda proud that we lived up to everyone's hopes, you know? Sore has tummy growls, Aridon. We eat tasty food soon, sore hungry. C'est magnifique, Arion. We really, really did it. Together, I feel like we can do anything, like I can stop anything. 
You helped me protect the most precious person to me in the world. Thank you. Your love of football even got through to Simeon in the end. I think I'll grow to like football even more now. Much, much more. We couldn't have clinched this victory alone. It's our team effort that pulled us through. I'm sort of glad I realized that. It's finally over, Arian. They all trusted in me. Volodya, Soji Okita, and now I've done what they expected of me. Booyah! Now that's what I call the ultimate eleven, eh? <laughs> I gotta thank you, Rymanites. You gave me the thrill of a lifetime, and I just can't get enough of it. I knew from the beginning you wouldn't fail to impress me, and Xanarch Avalonic is never wrong. Yeah! <laughs> Good work, Arian. You've done your bit for the team. Mr. Evans? Good heavens! He's back! He's back! Phew! I must admit I was growing rather fond of that crystal. You helped us out again, Grandad. I say, I do anything for football. Of course. It means everything to you, doesn't it? Only about as much as it means to a certain grandson of mine. <laughs> you got that right. Mark, I'll have to return to my own time after this. And I know football will be safe in your hands. Carry on my legacy, will you? Show the world what our football's all about. I will. I promise. Well, Mark, I'll be off now. Nice seeing you again. You too, Grandad.
So this is it. It's all a little bit sad. Something come out of so north. This is so sad. Take care. We won't ever forget any of you. Thank you all. I won't either. I don't think I could forget you. I'll have so many wonderful memories playing alongside you. So, the Let's Play of Inazuma 11 Go Chrono Stones comes to a close and we get some lovely gentle credits music as well with some great artwork on the bottom screen. But I can hardly even focus on that because... Because Katsu is coming! No, because we, we have more important stuff to say than that. Notably, after over six years, I've now Let's Played every English language main series in a Zuma 11 game. Now I have to pick some very particular words there because uh, in a Zuma 11 Strikers on the Wii was in English and I've never even played that one, never mind covered it. And of course, we all know that there is another game in the in a Zuma 11 series that was released after this one. That being in a Zuma 11 Go Galaxy and just for one reason or another, mainly down to copyright over the word galaxy, we never got that in English, and how I wish I could just play an official English language release on this channel straight after it. But you know what? Not all hope is lost. There is a fan translation out there which has been doing pretty good work from what I've heard. Heck, I've even done a bit of the fan translation myself. So, I'm never saying never. I would want to give that game a lot of time you know, even when they say it's finished, I'm sure it will be updated time and time again to make it better. And I want to make sure that game is absolutely finished and I'd have to figure out a way to play it on a platform I can record. But never say never, but it wouldn't be coming anytime soon if it is true. What I can say is coming soon is the post game of Inazuma 11 Go Chrono Stones. And I'm sure I'll do what I did with the last game and do a bit of a competition route match, just freely talking while discussing the plans for the post-game. Of course, it should include the multiplayer, but uh, to date the video a little bit, I'm recording this video in the middle of the lockdown in 2020, so can't exactly go and record that right now, but at the very least, I'll be grinding up my own team off-screen for any, sign any kind of post-game coverage that I can make. Again, it will probably be a while before I can release any because I've got to level up the team and plan out what I'm going to cover and keep doing a full-time job as well, but I am pleased to say that I've finished the main story of every English language in a Zoom 11 main game. It took a long time, but I've built up so many fans, so many friends along the way. When I first played in a Zoom 11 on this channel, I had around about 1,000 subscribers that I'd mainly just picked up through friends and the occasional let's play of another game. But here at the end of Chrono Stones, I'm on over 8,000 and still growing and still finding new viewers who are going through all the old in Zoom 11 content as well and hoping for more. And I do sincerely hope that that is something I can provide, be it Go Galaxy, be it the post, post game of this, Maybe even a bit of coverage on Strikers. I don't know if I can ever play a full Let's Play of that. It seems a tricky thing to do, but I'll always be there to make Inazuma 11 stuff for you guys because I love this series and I'm proud to be the guy on YouTube that brings this stuff to you. And 
I, don't get me wrong, I'm really, really going to miss having the story of this game to play, and of all games to play. I just wish Chrono Stones could happen all over again. But look how happy Alpha is, that makes up for everything right. I loved making this Let's Play and all the Inazuma 11 games, and I'm just so grateful that I've had the opportunity to do this for you all. And like I say, it's not over. Tale of the Toast is not going anywhere, and um, cough, cough, splutter, splutter, under me breath, Little Battler's experience kind of counts as an Inazuma 11 game too, right? Right? I said nothing. You heard absolutely nothing. But that was Chrono Stones, and I adore it. Do you know me? Oh, lovely to see you again. It won't be long before I give birth to baby Faye. Yeah, I know. But you... Won't be able to be your mother. I know. You'll take a turn for the worse after I'm born. Yes. But it's all right. Because we got to meet again. I guess. Besides, we changed history once before. I'll do my very best to meet my little baby. Goldie, I'll resist my fate and create a new timeline. Easy peasy. Well, goodbye, Mom. Okay. Faye, take care, sweetheart. I will. How are they so strong? Get it now? People like you from the old world need to be cleansed. Don't give up! Fortune smiles on those who fight to the very end! Yeah, that's what happens if you don't even the score in the first half of Ragnar. Thank you, JP, for getting the failed on your Moog in the hand for that one. <laughs> 